Corporate Board Member presents an informational webcast. On this edition, Risk Oversight in the Boardroom Highlights with T.K. Kerstetter, President of Corporate Board Member, and Marianne Warges, Partner and Co-Chair of the Corporate Governance Practice, Captain Mushin Rosenman. Welcome to Corporate Board Member's informational webcast. I'm T.K. Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member, and it's my pleasure to welcome you as we talk about a topic that's near and dear to our hearts. And yesterday we had a conference on a risk oversight in the boardroom. And I'm joined today by a guest that's going to help me talk about what came out of that conference that was very relevant to, to, in today's boardroom. Um, I'd like to welcome Marianne Warges, who is a partner with Catton Muchen Roseman. She headed some of our sessions yesterday and did a great job and thought that she was the perfect candidate to actually join us and talk a little bit today about uh, risk in the boardroom. Now, um, Marianne, one of the things that seemed to be a key point that was made during the day is where is this line? Where Everybody talks about crossing the line. So people will discuss this line. Tell me what the significance is of the line and why it's important in the boardroom. Well, TK, thank you. And um, as far as crossing the line, the line is the line between right and wrong. Where is that line? How close can we get to the line? A wise gentleman said that he may be uh, tempted sometimes to answer that uh, by saying, oh, maybe three and a half feet is close enough, okay? Um, but the reality of the business world is that companies need to balance risk and reward as part of their strategies. And they may need at times to push envelopes, to move into uncharted waters. Yet they need to do that having looked at potential risks, having been well advised as to what they're doing. Look at the technology advances that we've seen even within the past couple of years with um, mobile applications and other things. Companies are moving forth, taking their business models, which had been bricks and mortar, and moving them into an entire new field of cyberspace. That poses its own risks, but for many companies, it also pro provides terrific opportunities and great rewards. So being able to assess the risks that are involved legally, from a business perspective, uh, strategically, understanding what's involved, but not being afraid to push those envelopes and move forward. Yet, conferring with their advisors, um, understanding that um, I've had experiences with having directors call me from the Middle East in the middle of the night when they haven't been able to sleep because there's something that's been going on at the company or something that they don't understand. Something is going on and it's gnawing at them. So we talk about checking your gut. Don't just check the boxes. Check your gut. Be comfortable. And when you're going out to advisors, we also heard yesterday about um, checking the quality, checking the credentials of the advisors and the advice that you're getting. There was an example given of a company that had gone to five law firms looking for an opinion on a matter where five, four of the five firms, I guess, had turned it down, saying that they couldn't give the opinion. I think if you have a situation like that, the board needs to think carefully about the path that is being proposed and whether or not it's ultimately worth going down that path. Yeah, that's a great segue into what I heard as another to topic that was discussed all the time, and that is sort of this building of this ethical co culture and competing ethically as well as striving for good performance. Um, tone of the top seemed to be a pretty important issue as well. Tone of the top was mentioned a number of times. One of the commentators yesterday, though, um, said something that resonated with me. It's not just tone at the top. The directors need to get comfortable. They need to know that the tone at the top is right, but they need to know that that same tone is permeating through the middle all the way to the bottom in the rank and file, because that's when it works in an organization. Um, I had an experience a number of years ago where one of my clients was in a terrible mess. They ended up having to plead guilty to eight federal charges. 
okay? It was a terrible time for that company. That company changed its tone at the top. They put in really solid programs, and I'm just not talking a compliance manual because you can't just legislate compliance from the top down, but they built a culture. They started at the top, but they moved quickly to spread it throughout the organization. That company has since won many awards and is recognized by its peers and others as an outstanding company. So it's possible and it's important. It sure is possible. I mean, we've seen companies do turnarounds, you know, relative to that. And uh, yep, the boardroom and the management team are certainly the places that it has to start and it has to be reinforced. Now, one of the things that was an interesting discussion about uh, about at the conference was when we talked about threats. And corporate board member had just done some research and found out that sort of this IT security was the biggest issue that was causing lack of sleep w for directors. Right. And we heard that again from most of the committees y yesterday and most of the panels. Um, and that is just this whole cyber security threat that seems to be the biggest issue on the table that companies are worried about. It's a big issue for companies, TK. It's a big issue for our law enforcement. Um, the cyber threat is one, first of all, the cyber word is one that when we say it, it's, you know, it's alien. The word itself seems alien to us. But to have attacks that are coming from across the ocean, these attacks are being launched out of Russia. One of my clients was uh, subjected to an attack that appears to have been funded by uh, the Iranian government and others. Um, there are very sophisticated hackers um, out there. And I think what companies need to remember here is it's not whether they will be hacked. It is when they will be infiltrated. And this goes for companies in um, you know, manufacturing industries that we've looked at who, you know, may not consider themselves, they're not high-tech defense companies, they're not financial institutions, they're not telecommunications companies. Those are probably the three industries that people might look at and say, or, or technology, you know, saying they are possibly vulnerable to um, these cyber threats, to having others come in. But other companies are vulnerable because they are being used as pathways. If um, the hacker can infiltrate the one company system, it can then perhaps connect out through customers, through vendors, through others. And sometimes these are initiated as phishing expeditions, but they can bear real fruit and they move forward. Now, one of the speakers yesterday talked about from the law enforcement perspective, how important it is for companies to report cyber attacks promptly so that the FBI and other agencies can come in. And what these agencies, I believe, are looking to see is they, on a national level, are looking to see patterns and trends in the attack. And by reporting to them, we're helping all of ourselves by allowing them to find those patterns and trends and to help stymie and stop these attacks. On the other hand, a company needs to have its own plan in place. And directors, I would say, need to look at cyber attacks as more than just a box on their enterprise risk management dashboard. They need to understand what's behind the box at their company. They need to ask management proactively about their risks and the steps in the plan if a should an attack occur? Who do we notify? How do we make the outreach to our customers? How do we make an outreach to our suppliers, to others? Do we have in our database, do we have um, confidential information, healthcare information, personal finance information that needs to be protected where we have a reporting obligation that may be a regulatory reporting obligation? But once you go and report, the other important reason for the company to have the plan is not only to do it and to do what's right and to do it to preserve its own business, but once you do go into the government agency to report, even though they may be very willing to cooperate with you, there is the risk that you may lose a certain amount of control over what happens in the process from that point forward.
So the reason you need your plan in place is you're not going to have the time or the capacity to build that plan on the spot should something happen. So I would encourage directors to look into this. Well, what makes this particularly challenging, I think, is we're talking about cyber and IT, which is not typically familiar to the directors that are serving. A lot of this stuff, whether it's social media, through social media, through other forms, is new technology. So that's something, when you look at the demographics of a typical board, is not a natural fit. You know, the technology is new, but the crime isn't new. It's basically theft, okay? And directors have had to deal with um, trade secrets being stolen, with company property, overseeing um, the stewardship of the company property, company assets. So I think if directors are not uh, put off by the cyber word, the problem is one that they can address, and they do have the talent within their organizations, and if they don't, then they really need to consider where to look outside their organizations to get help, whether um, it be someone who comes in who um, hacks them to see what their exposure is. There are many reliable vendors out there who are doing that. Some of the um, big four are out there, and other very well-known consulting firms are providing these services and can assist there. And council can assist as well. Um, we can help by putting together the plan, staging the attack, and attempting to cloak the results with privilege if appropriate as the company is moving forward. When you look back on this day and all the panels that we had, and if you had to summarize what was one of the key points that the board members took away from the course of this, um, you know, that, that that not only they heard, but you would want them to walk away with. What, what is that topic, do you think? Risk has been in their business for decades. It's been in their business for centuries, okay? They have been managing risk. They have managed risk, and risk, that management, that assessment process, that development process, oftentimes leads to opportunities. They may find that there are places that the business can go opportunities that can be found, and it's all part of focusing on strategy. And that's really where directors want to focus and put their emphasis, isn't it? It sure is. Mary Ann Warges, thank you very much for giving us the update. Um, we know Catton stays on top of these things, and this proves fr fruitful for us, and we'll have to have you back again when we have a, a new update on cybersecurity and the legal ramifications of that. So thank you for joining us. And that will conclude this edition of Corporate Board Members Informational Webcast. We hope you'll join us again when we'll take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member and a better committee member. And we'll see you then. Marianne Warges can be reached at marianne.warges at cattenlaw.com. This has been a presentation of Corporate Board Member, an NYSE Euronext company.